The Labour Party governorship candidate in Lagos State, Guadalupe Rhodes Vivo, has said that the all progressive Congress led state government created problems for Lagosians and he would never close ranks with the APC. The aspiring governor, who was an active participant in the NSARS movement and has been at the forefront in youth involvement in politics as well as the campaign against voter apathy, said the Lagos government was being governed by proxy by one man. Badebo said the APC had for long, a long time underestimated the masses in the state. While well, joining us to discuss tonight is the Labour Party um, governorship candidate, um, Badebo Vivo Rhodes, and he's going to be talking to us about his campaign and plans for Lagos. It's good to have you join us in the studio. Always a pleasure. Happy New Year's in order. Same to you. Same <laughs> to you. Thank you. Um, so I, I, was re I was reading a few things about you recently, and, and one of the first things that uh, caught me was when you said that you were in a mission to free Lagos State. Yeah. And I'm wondering, what are you freeing Lagos uh, from? And what, how do you intend to free Lagos? So the idea is to free Lagos from state capture. State capture is when the resources of a state have been cornered by the political elite for their own self-sustainment, for their benefits, and for their proxies and their family, as opposed to truly the benefit of the state. Lagos State is run for profit. It's not run for the people. I say this because in everything that you think the government is performing in, you find it's performing inefficiently in terms of price that they um, implement in projects for. And you find that its interest must always be represented, not for the people's interest, but the, for the sake of collecting money. I mean, when you have family members in government positions, you have family members in charge of bus routes, you have you just see that the state is literally organized around collecting funds and resources for state capture and the people in charge of the hedge money. And that is what we're trying to free Lagos from. Hmm. How do you intend to do this? Because what the picture you painted sounds more like a strategic calculated um, cabal of sorts. And yeah. How do you intend to break these ranks? How do you intend to um, the, the, destroy the establishment for the ones who are Yes, the idea is it? the people are tired. It's not just me. You cannot, you cannot create a new type of policy or poli uh, politics without the people's active engagement in it and saying that they're tired. They want a situation where, you know, one kilometer of road is being done for the price that it should be done for. Not, you know, you're doing the price of one kilometer of road that you could have used to get four kilometers of road, mm. right? So you're not taking 20 plus years to do 16 kilometers of rail. When you're already taking the money for it, and you're supposed to actually do 160 kilometers. At the rate they're going, it will take 200 kilometers, it will take 200 years to be able to do the 160 kilometers of rail that they plan to do and collect their money for in the first place. Yes, we need 160 kilometers of rail for Lagos to work. Mm -hmm. They've done 16 kilometers of that in 20 plus years, mm -hmm. right? So at the rate they're going, it will take 200 years to finish that 160 kilometers of road. But I know, I know that you're one person and you obviously are trying to set, you know, Lagos on the right path. But Lagosians have been in this for 20 years, like you said. Why have we not pushed to ask the questions on accountability for these, you know, projects that you're saying lots of monies have been dispersed, but then very little is there to show for. Where does the average negotiation come in here? It's not just about I the mean, man who's you see, You see, office. the issue is, Fela has talked about this since. We, we are people that normalize suffering, normalize mediocrity, will be suffering and smiling. Everybody knows all these things. Everybody knows about billions that are going to Alpha Beta, that's been going for years. Meanwhile, we have children in primary school sitting on the floor, you know, in ill-equipped schools, ill-equipped hospitals. We have accommodation crisis all across the state, you know. So they know these things. They know the appropriations that have happened in terms of properties that belong to the state that have been taken, lands that have been taken by families, polytechnics or hospitals for medical um, nurses that have been appropriated. So they know these things. But I feel that for the longest time, they felt helpless. Do you think that they know or you believe that they know? Is this something that you think they know? Because another thing is, how many people really know what government is doing, mm. aside from those who actually maybe are on the level of you yes. and I? That, that's a good point, right? I think that from what I've experienced, and even from politics, grassroots politics, when you go and say these things, in words, it doesn't, people don't look surprised, they don't look shocked. They are aware of all this information. 
they know. So that's why I give that impression. So even at the high level where you say we're operating at and then going to grassroots and talking to people and you're saying these things, they know what Alpha Beta is, right? They know about all the appropriation that Lagos State has done. Uh, the, the people behind the state capture of Lagos State has done. So the idea is this. And why it's so important is this. We have a huge population in Lagos State. And resources must be put in place to make this population as productive as possible and for a state to run as efficiently as possible so it can truly be the commercial capital of Nigeria, number one for ease of doing business, and number one that has social sort of welfare um, background that can allow because there are too many people. And when you have so many people like this, if you don't manage the whole process and the people well you start to create chaos hmm. and literally we're starting to get to that I, you might have seen the video where in lecky people just came and almost um just hijacked about 30 cars and just started banging and robbing them you know early evening you have people that are trying to go home in a papa they're going to take the long road because of all the tankers they're in traffic they are always robbed. Well, thank you for talking about a papa because and this is a question I will ask every single person who says they want to run for governor or they want to be governor of Lagos State. A few weeks ago, I talked about this um, issue or, or on the radio um, about the Apapa Oshodi um, Tinkan area and the mayhem that goes on there every single day. There was some magic wand that was thrown around sometime in 2023 when the vice president visited. Every single truck disappeared. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering... If we, have a, if we have what it takes to clear that place in one day, why can't we continue it? What exactly so, does it pay us? I mean, how, how does it pay us to continue to have that block there? So there are a number of factors here, and we have to actually take time and look at it. One, there's a human factor, because when they brought that into system, right, there was a bit of leeway that started to happen. But then the human factor got involved. Stakeholders felt, some of them felt they were not carried along. And they also have a lot of people that make money from those long queues. Mm -hmm. It's in their interest for those things to exist because Lagos State has normalized the idea. And it become a culture of monkey, they walk baboon, they chop. People just come and just be collecting, collecting, right? So it's in their interest for that to happen. But also, you have all the tank farms that don't have proper parking and places for their trucks or trucks that are coming into them to park so everybody's parking on the road. Another problem we have is because we are such a, an unproductive nation, you have 8 out of 10 containers that are coming in going back empty. So typically a container comes in, discharges, it should go and pick up something to export. So you have a bit of time lag, but you're just dropping off and going right back to the port and that's the problem. And that's where, by God's grace, His Excellency Peter will be the whole conversation about moving com from consumption to production will actually start to make a difference, even in Lagos. And then now have the trains, which we're talking about. Train systems should not just be about moving people. It must also be about moving cargo. One of the reasons why our, tr our roads are so bad, I mean, look at that Papa Gomu road. Terrible. I've, I was there on a Sunday, and a trailer literally tipped over. And that's another reason why I love trailers tipping over, killing a lot of people. These trucks are carrying so much load, and then they are destroying the roads. Right? And they're constantly moving and they're constantly in traffic. Our roads are not built for that kind of load. So those, and you know, we find it all across the world. Most of these cargoes move by water, by rail. Right? So we need to move that. And the federal government has done quite a bit of work um, with, um, the tr with the train system that's going from the ports to a meter. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've made quite significant progress. So we're going to do that. And then we're also going to ensure that we're moving things by barges, um, and um, dry ports. So in Ikorodu, expanding that in Badagri as well, and the Ojo Axis. So we want to move those containers off the road. Hmm. Still talking about movement, let's talk about transportation in Lagos, which is another... Major uh, issue. Yeah, major issue. Uh, but we cannot talk about transportation without talking about where the transportation goes on, especially the roads. The roads in Lagos seem to not necessarily be in the best state, especially not the Lekki Ekpe Express. It's yes. now more like you're going on a mm -hmm. desert safari mm -hmm. of sorts. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Lekki Ekpe might be a federal road and, you know, a lot of that. What's the relationship between government and federal government and state in terms of these federal highways? Because, I mean, I'm, I tell you, I'm from a state where we've had a terrible spot for years, and I'm talking about from the uh, Obasanjo administration to now. Monies are earmarked for it exactly. within the budget, but the Odupangi Junction or Kalabai 2 Road is a total mess. Mm -hmm. So again, 
how do state governments liaise with, if you were a governor of Lagos mm -hmm. State, what would you do to make sure that these expressways are actually pliable and not death traps? Yeah, so for me, uh, what I found, and you look, the APC always said that once they are aligned, then everything is going to work properly, but that's not been the case. Lagos State, for me, is a city-state, right? And while we need the federal government, Lagos State can't do without it in my opinion, hmm. right? Because we don't, the state government itself does not need to spend its own money doing public works. Our hmm. work is to create an enabling environment for a lot, to allow the private sector and infrastructure developers to come and actually do these works. If we need to tow places, we can do that. But the idea is to make sure that whatever tow that's being put is at the cheapest possible rate for our people. And do these tolls not have a timeline? Because again, one of the issues with exactly. tolling in Nigeria is it, we make the, the money, but we uh, still continue to Exactly. So for me, it's about creating... So whatever we're trying to do is to maximize the benefits of the, to the life of people. So that's the negotiation we'll be doing. You're coming here, you're going to and put this price so it's affordable for a lot of people. And then the tolling stops after a certain period of time. And this way, we'll be, trying, we'll be building infrastructure all across Lagos at the same time. Because of the sheer number of people here, it is feasible to do a lot of projects in Lagos State. Now, you find a lot of governments want to keep their hand on each project because when you do big projects, you can then appropriate and steal money. We're not interested in that. We want to deliver maximum amount of service to people. So we are going to partner with the private sector. They can do things at a benchmark. We can use the World Bank benchmark and say a kilometer of road is supposed to cost this. So you must deliver at that price. A lot of people say that talk is cheap, especially if you're trying to run for office and trying to get votes and you sound all, you know, like this is what we're going to do. I mean, for, for want of a better example, the Buhari administration promised us so much and here we are. Uh, it looks like we're back where we were in 2015, anybody but the person who's sitting on that seat. Why, why should we trust you? Well, because I have, a, I, I have a pedigree and a history of being a person of my word. I'm consistent, right? You, I have been anti-APC and the government that has existed in Lagos all my political career. Does that make you better than... No, I mean, you power? see, we must make decisions out of hope and not fear, right? Because people have betrayed our trust does not mean we completely give up. Because then what's the point of doing anything? Right? But we must believe that things will get better. And if I don't, and that's why I say these things live on TV. So you can hold me to that. The fact of the matter is I cannot get into this position if the people don't put me there. I don't have bullion vans. I don't have a whole host of admirals or touts, right? I'm counting on the people to put me there to serve them. And if I go in there and I don't do what is needed and you don't hold me to these things, you can remove me. That's the wonderful thing about democracy, how it ought to be practiced. Yeah. Right, So we're coming here to serve, and we're co we can only get in based on people putting us there. Still talking transportation. Um, many would say for Lagos, that is the economic capital of Nigeria, where we have you know, many people, more and more people keep migrating to Lagos. We need more roads, more infrastructural development. So we now have the, tr the blue rail. Um, you know, we now have, well... We still have the water taxis that, you know, many people will say it's not enough. But should we not be thinking about um, cable cars and expanding our, you know, transportation system? Now, because the governor is running for a second term and you're also running, um, what other ideas would you be able to bring to the table? Because you obviously you've lived abroad. You have yes. an idea of how transportation works. For yeah. example, in New York, you don't have to sit in traffic. You mm -hmm. can use the underground, and mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Um, how do you intend to change the transportation woes of the average Lagosian? A beautiful question. Um, first of all, let's establish that our transportation system in Lagos State is mediocre at best, right? Most of the major roads, the Third Mainland Bridge, you know, the opening was done by the military. I don't want to imagine how many years. I mean, we're talking every, when it gets close to the election, you start hearing about Fort Mainland Bridge again, right? It's standard. You, you can literally predict what they're going to talk about. Right? So we must actually deliver four, four rail lines in four years. Right? Lagos State Badon is 175 kilometers. It was done in five years for 1.5 billion. These people have taken 1.2 billion and they've only done 16 kilometers of rail. Now, somebody is going and doing politics and tokenism, showing us pictures, but did anybody go on the blue line today? Has anybody gone on the blue line today? It's literally three bus stops. Right? And this was supposed to go all the way from Marina to 
Badagri at first, then they reduce it to Okokomaiko, and then they reduce it even further. So we need a situation where we have all the strain systems working, and then we need to dredge our waterways properly. Mm. It takes care of two things. It takes care of our flooding, and it allows for us to have proper industrial water transportation. Ferries were in existence during Jack on this time. I mean, ferries are carrying 500, 600 people. The reason why water transportation has not been normalized is because a lot of people don't feel safe because of those small boats and the capacity for them to capsize. When you have a proper large boat, people can start feel comfortable. When you have boats, you can drive your car in, come to the next side, drive your car out. People will start to normalize an, inter um, an intermodal means of transportation in Lagos State. Now, once we've done that, then we can now start to think about other ideas. Like you talk about, cable cars is something I've always looked at, right? And you can have th that kind of transportation in a particular local government. It doesn't have to be you're going all the way from Ikeja to this place on a cable car. But you can look at these things, and also these things that you can look at it in terms of attracting tourism. Because by the time you do things like that, and then you're creating experiences, people want to come to Lagos to experience that as well. So for me, I mean, look at Venice. Just that there's a little cano. Yes, it gets people around, but it also is a tourist attraction. Absolutely. Right? So we're going to be doing all of that and ensuring that even also ride sharing, even something as simple as the BRT lane, we have to open it up to the private sector. It's not okay for one person to just be the only person that. If you, as a person, has the capacity to have a bus, just like Uber, and you meet certain um, criteria, okay. your bus should be allowed to go because we have we are deficit. We don't have enough buses. In the morning, you see long queues. So why should one, if you don't have the capacity to service all of that, why should only one person be able to, you know, so ride sharing, using innovation, ensuring that all of that, you know, normalize ride sharing. And then we incentivize people to carry as many people as possible. So that when you're going back on third mainland, you're not just saying one man and his driver in a car. No. You will use heat sensors to know, okay, this person, this car is full. This car is only one person. There is a charge for that. But that will only happen after we've created alternative means of transportation. Mm -hmm. right? And then some places will be pedestrianized. Some places you can use bicycles. So we want to open this place up. And then the last thing is we need to decentralize our planning of Lagos so that every local government is running sustainably and we are incentivizing companies to set up there. So you are in Kourou, you don't necessarily feel the need to come to Lekki. You can get everything you need there, right? So that's the way Lagos will be able to breathe. Hmm. Let's talk about environmental issues, which also um, add to the natural disasters that happen. Now, Lagos is obviously a coastal state and we're always um, you know, susceptible to flooding. But... Um, we do have a Ministry of Environment, which is at the federal and states, but um, the departments and the agencies that are um, under that ministry, um, what do they need to be doing? Because again, yes, we know that citizens have a role to play in terms of you know, um, the dumping, the, the dumping of unnecessary that. refuse in gutters, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but sometimes sh the, the, we need to wield the stick, you know, but then there seems to be a lax in that area. There used to be um what we called environmental sanitations back in the day but then some states had you know made it a thing of the past for example in cross river every day is environmental sanitation yeah. day and and same for aquai bomb states so why can't lagos do that especially knowing that you have so many people and then the more people you have the more garbage that this, yes. you know the city has to deal with yes. so what innovative ideas do you have in that regard thank you so the first thing is we need to strengthen our local governments right at the local government level, I want to have will be potential governors as local government chairmen, not people that are appendages from your political party that I just throw into a local government to you know reward them for loyalty. No, we want visionary leaders, potential governors. You never see that jump in Lagos from potential from local government chairman to governor, but that's what it should be. Mm. Now, once we have that, we now have to understand waste as wealth. After human capacity. Waste is our biggest resource. We produce so much waste and we have such a small land, um, land size so we can pick up so much waste. Mm -hmm. And for me, when we treat waste as wealth, we have different rules for organic waste, different rules for plastic waste, different rules for paper waste. And organic waste will, come with, will be picked up by a different truck. 
Now, in doing this, we are opening up that entire waste management system and depoliticizing it. You don't need to know the person in APC to be able to be part of LOMA or participate as a PSP. We open it up transparently. So now we have different rules for collecting waste. Because right now, what we call waste management is waste dumping. We are not managing waste. We are creating landfills, which is wasting waste. Now, in doing all of this, we now have a situation where it's too valuable for it to be dumping. And then we are also going to have a zero policy towards plastics, right? You can create bags out of cassava. How is this that going to be? Come on. Let me tell you. Let me tell you how. Literally. No, you're asking for a renovative yeah. idea. So instead of using plastics now, you use cassava fluid, right? Yes. Yes. There are bags that are made out of that. Yeah. But yes. And guess what? When you dump readily it. readily available is it, We have they? cassava in Nigeria. Yes, but how ready, uh, readily available are these cassava made these are bags? Things, these are things, yes, these are things that are not hard I to mean, make. I mean, if you said paper bags, it's no, very Paper feasible. bags as well, paper bags as well. But the reason why I say cassava is that you are also incentivizing the farms, hmm. right? And also, you have a situation where once you dump that plastic, it decomposes by itself, right? So, you're talking about innovative ideas. These are things that we're going to bring in. Not overnight we are going to ban things. No, we'll test it in the local government. See feedback and expand on it. Right? But the idea is we want to be a state known globally for zero waste. That's where we want to get to. And back to, what you're, what, to your question about other innovations. So we ensure that our, gutter, our, our um, waterways are not blocked yes. based on changing our understanding and perception of waste. But even bigger still, one of our biggest problems in Lagos City is we have no wetland protection policy. You wake up today... One developer that has paid government a certain amount of money has sand filled one uh, wetland. But wetlands are our natural gutters that actually were supposed to contain water because we're a coastal state, like you said. But that's not the case. So literally, you see, they're always blocking the paths for water. And unfortunately, you find I love this sand filling is done for the benefit of the rich. Mm -hmm. And then water is displaced because water has to go somewhere. But you find that that water is displaced and is affecting people that do not have any embankment to protect them. You see the effect of Eco Atlantic. Same thing. So we need to have a wetland protection policy that is sacrosanct and nobody's above it. And then an urban planning policy that also takes into consideration that we need to ensure that water is always able to leave the city. Mm. So for instance now, you see, if you look on Ted Mainland Bridge, you see they're starting to fill the area of Makoko. They're doing this slowly because election season is just here. I'm sure it's going to full drive once election is over. But now, all of that is now going to block the path of water from Lagos mainland. Then Lagos mainland is going to start flooding more. Then guess what? They'll say it's climate change. It's climate change. But the things we are supposed to do by ourselves, we are not doing. But, but uh, if what you say, you're saying is anything to go by, we have experts in these, like I said, ministries of environment and ministries of works. Um, and they're supposed to you know, be the ones who say, this is what it should be uh, as ideas or seven ad as an advisory to government or whoever is you know in town planning uh, it beats me to believe that they would sit back and allow this to happen. we have we have experts in ministry of works and ministry of planning that give approvals for buildings but buildings are collapsing in lagos every time right so unfortunately like i said lagos state is run for profit it's not run for the interests of the people as far as i'm concerned and i see it every day so for me Ensuring that we have these things and we can say, we know we are not going to take that money or this tax from this developer because we need to think long term and ensure that we can have reservoirs for water. So this will be a wetland. Bad as bad, what we are, what we are going to do is we'll convert it to a tourist park. Mm. We have plants there. We have animals there. So it can become a zoo. But we don't have to sand fill it. It can just be walkways through. I mean, you've been to, um, I forget the name of this garden in Lekki. Um, conservation. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. It's, it's drawing um, tourists, it's drawing crowds. So, so they, yeah, they do have a kind of thing. Exactly. So yeah. you can do, so you don't have to completely sand fill the place. You can make the most of nature and also allow it to do what it's supposed to do for you as a coastal city. And lastly, we make our um, drainage system digital and mechanized. So we are not going to be reacting, oh, rain fell. No, we know that rain is going to fall. And our pumps are operating based on data we are getting. So it's operating at maximum efficiency every time. So it's not going to be going at 100 consistently. You can go at 10 based on data we are getting that, about the rains that are falling. And go to 100 when it's very heavy. Mm. Right? And we have this system all across Lagos State. Ensure our canals are not blocked. 
I was in Suru Liri day before yesterday. Um, and you look at Kana, it's just a dump. You have waste full of water is not flowing properly. And you see, this was Suru Liri, a place that, you know, was the prime, one of the prime locations to live in the early 80s, early 90s. <laughs> you know, so there's so much work to do, but we need leadership that is hell bent on the quality of life that the Lagosians have. Again, I, I ask you, uh, you're one person. The establishment of the cabal is over the years has grown, and there's so many people, lips and bound. Yes. Um, how can one man break through this? Always remember. And all these, these ideas are amazing, they're laudable, but you have to get the votes first. Yes. And if you do get the votes, how do you break through? Because you see, a lot of people would say President Buhari at first had the best interest for Nigerians, but look where we are. Yes. So you can have the well, best Well, I'm idea sorry. I, I, think, I, think, I think there is interest. That's, that's, that's basic. There's empathy, which I think is the most important. So it's not, you're not running to tick a box of being president of Nigeria, which I believe President Buhari was running to do. Because if you want to be the best at what you're doing, you prepare yourself for it. When I went into politics, I'm an architect by profession. When I went into politics, I went back to school. I got another degree from Unilag. I didn't go back abroad. I went because I wanted to understand Nigeria a lot better. I got a master in research and public policy. I wanted to make myself the best version of myself to govern. President Buhari has no record of doing anything like that. So I'm not, I don't want to compare apples and oranges. And also, Right? Cerebral capacity, energy. And that's what Peter Obi is bringing to the table, aside from the other two candies. Cerebral energy and capacity. And I feel that when you combine that youth vibrancy, cerebral capacity, and empathy, you have a wonderful potential leader. And look at Alaji Latif Jakonde. While we say, yes, you are one man, he achieved everything he did in four and a half years with the civil service. Was he a civilian governor? He was. Yes, but. Um, the, what, why I'm asking this is that, well, how we practice democracy then and now is totally different. I understand. But so also remember It's a different that. era. And I'm not saying people no, can't right. do We're I here agree. to change things. I but agree. then, looking at where he was and where we are today, it's a different yeah. ballgame. No, yes, I agree 100%. When you talk to people of that era and you tell them how politics has become a money thing, they are shocked. When you sit down on Paddy Banjo and you tell him how you have spent all this money, he's like, because then the people, the quality of followership, was so impressive. They used to contribute money to the party. And they took pride in it. But the fact of the matter is, all these political elites we are talking about, they're not up to 3,000. We are 20 something million in Lagos State. We have more than a few good men. And I assure you that for me to have come this far is because there are a lot of people that mean well and want a Lagos that I'm describing. And do you think that Lagosians are ready to move away from the norm and vote in a greenhorn? I won't say I'm a greenhorn. I work with the American government. I work with Chinese government on public policy. On but you've never held a public office in Nigeria, have you? I haven't. I haven't. But you know, sometimes the best things come from people that have not been stagnated by the status quo. When people talk about experience, in the last 20 years, your experience is what? Maintaining the status quo of state capture. I don't give any value to that. Right? So we want to change things and make sure Lagos State works for the people. So I believe that we have a good number of people that want to see that happen. And March is almost here. February is almost here. By God's grace, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Okay. Well, uh, Badebo Viva Rhodes is the governorship candidate for uh, the Labour Party in Lagos State. And uh, he's been here telling us about uh, his plans for Lagos. Always a pleasure to have you at the Thank studio. Thank you so much. Always All right. Pleasure. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing President Buhari's promises to Nigerians when he came in 2015, as opposed to now that he said he's done his best. We'll be talking about that after this break. <laughs>